I'm Theodore Carter, and I'm reading my story 8. This story appears in my collection, The Life Story of a Chilean Sea Blob and Other Matters of Importance. The book is available through Runamuck Books, through their website at runamuckbooks.com, or wherever books are sold online. 8. Samuel woke with a stomach ache, but didn't think much of it until he threw up a live goldfish. Kneeling over the toilet, he watched the fish. At first, he thought the water stirred, not the fish. But when the water settled and the heavier chunks of spew found their place at the bottom of the bowl, the fish still swam around. Its tail moved, gills flickered, everything. Samuel's nausea grew. He clutched his stomach, staggered to his bed, and burrowed under the covers. He reached for the phone on his nightstand and dialed his boss. After the beep, he said, Dick, I'm sick and can't come in. He lay for two hours before calling his HMO. The woman on the phone said, Five o'clock, but we can only see you in our downtown office. Is there something sooner? Closer? Sorry, sir. We're overbooked. Okay, he said. Five. The pain got worse. He began to sweat, so he took off the blanket and lay on top of the sheet. He drank water, but it sat in his gut like strong vodka. The TV screen strained his eyes, and the sound hurt his head. Acid began building in his throat, and he staggered over to the toilet again. Something lodged in his esophagus. He tried hard to bring it up, then tried swallowing it back down. Both techniques failed, leaving him kneeling over the toilet, panting, sweating, stomach churning, his head positioned over the bowl. Finally, he threw up. Mostly water. But amidst the spew and bile, a small toad about the size of his thumb swam around. He called the advice nurse. I threw up a live fish, he said, and a toad. What do you mean? I threw up. A live fish was in it. The second time, a toad. You ate a fish and then threw it up? I don't eat fish. Then how did you throw it up? I don't know. She paused. Are you experiencing any other symptoms? I'm nauseous and I have a sharp pain in my gut. My head hurts, also my eyes, but I think that's because of the pain. On a scale of 1 to 10, how painful is it? What's a 10? Severe pain. Like limbs being torn off or just really sick? 0 is no pain, 10, severe pain. 8. Intense pain? You better come in right away. They said I can't until 5. Did you tell the nurse you were an eight? No. Eight or higher, we need to see you right away. Okay, I'll come in. The doctor ruled out appendicitis, then said, it's probably viral or food poisoning from the fish you ate. I didn't eat fish. Good, she said. If you're still feeling like an eight after three days, make another appointment. The next day, he woke up in intense pain. He emailed his boss. His boss emailed back. We sure could use your help on the Friedman Grant. He ate saltines for breakfast. An hour later, he threw them up, along with a six-inch-long garter snake. The advice nurse said, The doctor says the symptoms should clear up on their own. There's nothing we can do. I threw up a snake. Call in two more days if the problems persist. I'm an eight, he said. I'm sorry. On subsequent days, he threw up a mouse and a turtle. The turtle scraped the inside of his mouth pretty good as it came up. Sucking ice helped some. He called in. The problems persist. You'd better come in and see your regular doctor, said the nurse. The doctor said, Samuel, I haven't seen you in a while. I've been healthy. And now you're not? I threw up a live fish, toad, snake, mouse, and a turtle. All at once? On separate occasions. Oh. Is that better on separate occasions? Not necessarily, she said. She checked Samuel's throat, which was normal except for the scrapes from the turtle's shell. How long has this been going on? The doctor asked. Five days. I'm going to refer you to gastroenterology, she said. They'll see you within the week. Over the next seven days, he threw up an animal a day, each slightly larger than the one before. Samuel's boss emailed. I'll need a doctor's note. You've been absent a full week. Samuel called the advice nurse. I need a doctor's note. 
I'm sorry, she said. We have no record that there is anything wrong with you. I've been in twice. I have an appointment with gastroenterology. You haven't been diagnosed. I'm in intense pain. You're really an eight? Yes. Are you sure? Does it hurt more than childbirth? Does childbirth hurt more than throwing up a turtle? I really couldn't tell you, sir. Did you tell your doctor about your pain? Yes. And what did she say? To make an appointment with gastro. Wonderful. I'm sure somebody will be able to help you tomorrow. He emailed Dick. I haven't been diagnosed yet, so I don't have a note. Dick emailed back. Your absences are unexcused and we can't pay you for them. The gastro doctor poked Samuel's gut, looked inside his throat, and grimaced when Samuel told him about the animals. I want you to make an appointment with mental health. Why? The body can have a physical response to mental illnesses. I'm throwing up animals, he said. Don't you think that's unusual? Very, he said. The therapist smiled and motioned him in. Samuel might have smacked her for that smile if he wasn't still feeling like an eight. She asked him to sit, and he did. You're throwing up animals, she said. Yes. That's a peculiar thing to say, don't you think? Yes. Then why did you say it? That's what's happening. Tell me more. First it was a goldfish, then bigger things. A snake, most recently a cocker spaniel. Fish symbolize God. The snake, sin. Throwing up is a form of spiritual cleansing. But what about this pain? What does it mean? And the cocker spaniel? Are those real maladies or symbolic maladies? Why would I make this up, he said. You're the only one who can answer that, she said. Unsure how to respond, Samuel stayed quiet. Finally, the therapist said, I'm prescribing some medication and handed him a slip of paper. Come see me in two days. Can you call my boss, he asked. I can't work. Sure, she said. He wrote down the number. The medicine didn't help his stomach and it made it hard to sleep. His boss sent an email. After speaking with your doctor, long recovery, mental illness, no physical symptoms, highly symbolic, we're going to have to let you go. He emailed back. Can I keep my insurance? He asked. For a while, so you can get better. His stomach felt bad when he went back to the therapist. I'm warning you, he said. I feel real bad. Still with the animals? I threw up an Indonesian anteater this morning. My throat's bleeding too. Are you taking your medication? Yes. She wrote something down in a notebook. You don't believe me, do you? The doctors found nothing wrong with your stomach. He gave her a dirty look. I believe you think you're throwing up animals, she said. That can be very real, in a sense. Just then, he started gagging. He knew it would be something big from the way it stuck in his throat. He knew it was a mammal from the scratch of its fur as it traveled up his esophagus and over his tongue. A full-grown panther emerged, slimy from Samuel's insides, its eyes gleaming. It roared, shook its head, then looked at the therapist. It pounced. She screamed, but her shriek ended when the panther swiped her throat and sliced her jugular. Blood sprayed everywhere. Samuel wanted to be horrified, but all he could think was, I finally showed her. The huge cat stood over the therapist and licked at the blood pooling on the carpet. Samuel backed away and tried to leave, but the door was locked. Let me out, he yelled at the secretary on the other side of the door. No, she said. I heard a roar and shrieking. I called the police. I threw up a panther, he said. Fine, she said. Luckily, the panther had calmed since mauling the therapist. It looked content, lapping up her blood and snoozing behind her desk. Samuel watched its tail swish gently back and forth, sometimes smacking the corpse's leg. Twenty minutes later, three cops came through the door. One held a gun with a red dart sticking out of its end. Thank goodness, Samuel said. The cop shot the panther with the dart. It groaned and pawed at the red feather protruding from its neck, then collapsed. Another cop cuffed Samuel. Why are you doing this, he asked. The secretary said you threw up that panther. That true? Yes, do you believe me? It's rare, but I've seen it before. Why are you cuffing me? 
You're dangerous. What will you throw up next? I don't know. Exactly. What will you do with me? There's a facility a hundred miles south. Can they cure me? That's not really for me to say. There was a trial. The judge determined Samuel's condition dangerous, though everyone agreed it was not his fault. He needed help. The court doctor made a diagnosis, animal regurgitation. The doctor said he'd notify Samuel's boss. Prison wasn't necessary, but they took him to the facility a hundred miles south. When he arrived, the nurse said, I think you'll find it quite comfortable, as she showed him to his room. Twin bed, sink, toilet, bars on the windows, which he thought prudent considering the panther. Can you cure me? It's a complicated illness. We can't promise you'll be cured, but we've had some success alleviating symptoms. Like throwing up animals? Not completely, though sometimes we are able to reduce the size of the animals our patients regurgitate. With cooperative patients who follow treatments. What are the treatments? Medication, group therapy, electroshock. If it works, can I go home? Most likely not. The symptoms will get worse. One patient released last year threw up a Tyrannosaurus. Dinosaurs are extinct. It was a severe case. The next day, he met some other patients. Compared with the rest of them, he'd thrown up the most vicious animal, and that gave him some status. The facility had a computer room, and he checked his email. He had two. His HMO said they would receive documentation of his diagnosis from an outside physician. If he wanted to be reevaluated by a network physician, his insurance would cover it. His boss emailed. He'd heard about the incident with the therapist and the court case and apologized for not believing Samuel earlier. The office had pitched in for a bouquet that would arrive shortly. Samuel told his story in group therapy. It's not fair, said one patient. Yeah, but he barfed up a panther that killed his therapist. He can't just waltz out of here and go back to work, you know? The therapist said, Let's not get caught up in the severity of our symptoms. The point is, we're all battling our own illness. He agreed with the man who'd said he couldn't be let out because he didn't think the facility was helping much. He sat looking at the other patients, clutched his stomach, and thought about all that had happened. He still felt like an eight and realized he probably always would.